Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we are, are going to do the Greek Key Mosaic Crochet Blanket. This is using Bernat Blanket. Really quite a thick yarn as you see and the one side it'll appear striped and the other side has this beautiful Greek key on here. You will notice that the colors are switching places. We only have two colors in this and let's go to the pattern now and let's discuss. I will be teaching how to do this pattern and I'll also cover the border because it's your lucky day. So let's begin to look at the pattern next. So let's take a look at this pattern today. It's just a two pager. We also have a diagram that you can use to be able to follow. Really quite a beautiful. It needs a uh, three balls of each of the colors. So there's cold C and birch is color A and B. And so what we have is all the written instructions. If you would like to change the size of this blanket, it's in multiples of four. So it's not multiples of four plus anything. It's just four. And uh, we're gonna have a diagram to be able to do and I will take you through step by step with each of the rows that are in the repeat because you'll notice that it will have the blue here in the key here and then it will switch places like this and so there are two separate instructions for that. So you'll notice the repeat is actually really quite significant in the number of rows. So let's take a look at the diagram. It is on page number two. So page number two. You will also need a, a nine millimeter uh, crochet hook in order to play. That's the size M as in Michael and you can see the diagram is right here. So I've blown that up uh, just for my own purposes to teach and you can see the repeat here is all the way from rows one through twenty. So the first two rows are the setup rows and then the repeat that officially starts here. So let's take a look at my bigger diagram next. So here's the bigger diagram. Bum, bum, bum. So we have two rows that are the setup rows and then we're going to begin our repeats. You will notice that whenever we skip anything, so when we're coming on row number one, we single crochet the first three. We chain two just to skip over one and the reason why we're chaining two is that we're creating an indentation so that this one in the future will come down into this stitch and will rest flat into the uh, project. If you only chain one, if you're skipping one, you will notice that it will kind of buckle so you don't wanna do that. So you just gotta keep that in mind. So what we're going to do in this particular project, you will notice that each of the two rows are always the same color. So one and two is the same color and then three and four is the same color and then five and six and so the colors when they're not in use will just uh, uh, hang out on the side here and you'll just keep using those as you go all the way up. The nice thing about that is that this side will have all the carrying yarn with you and then when we do the border those carrying pieces of yarn will be buried into the border which you will not see. So this is a kind of a fun idea today and I don't think I need to chitter chatter too much today. Let's just get you to go and I'm gonna do a swatch in order for you to play and we can play together beginning right now. So let's begin by creating a slip knot. This is an intermediate level project but I think if you're determined in your beginner stage, if easy stage, you could probably do this too. So you can either chain 80 or you can go in multiples of four and then change the size. So that's what I'm gonna do. So one, two, three, four. Is your blanket wide enough? Yes or no? If not, do another four. So one, two, three and four and etc. And you'll do that all the way across or you can just chain 80. So I'll be right back in just a moment. So get your chain ready and we'll begin row number one in just a moment. So let's begin row number one. You're gonna go second chain from the hook. So one and two and go to the back hump of the chain and single crochet. Staying on the back hump of the chain going all the way down just one single crochet in each and this is gonna be row number one. So do this all the way across. Once you have finished row number one, this is set up. You're going to turn your work and go all the way back with one single crochet. So let's do row number two. In row number two, you're going to chain one and in the same one that you're in, you're going to apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way back to the other side. The very last stitch, the final pull through of the last stitch should be the new color and I'll see you back there in just a moment and then we'll officially start this repeating pattern. So I've come all the way to the end so I'm gonna come through with the last stitch but I don't wanna finish it. I wanna put the new one on, create a slip knot with the new color. This is called plum chutney. This is called sand, the other color if you're interested to know that. So you're gonna pull that through. So you're gonna let the sand just let uh, hold to the side right now and then this plum one you're going to then begin and we're gonna officially start row number one of the repeat pattern using that color. So let's go to the diagram and let's talk. When we're looking at these diagrams, you're going to notice that we're gonna start row number one. So we're going to single crochet in the first three, chain two, only skip one and then single crochet in the next three, chain two and only skip one and you keep doing that until you get to the other side. So the last three stitches then will be 
single crochet. So we have to come back because this is where the yarn is being carried. So in order to change color you have to come back. So on the other side here when you chain one you have to match stitch for stitch for chain for chain. So if there's a stitch below then there's a stitch here. So single crochet and if there's a chain you chain two and jump over and then come to the next single crochet for three. And you can see that all the way through. So the story then changes a bit on number three and four which I'll cover in just a moment. So let's do rows number one and two. So number one and two of the repeat pattern you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet in that same one plus the next two. So what I would do if I were you this straggler just put it down on top of the line. So when you go to crochet just crochet right over it so it can hide it into position. So one and then two and three and then I need you to chain two, one, two and skip only one stitch and go to the second and do the next three. So one, two and three and then chain two, skip one only one stitch and then the next three and you're gonna do this all the way to the other side. Make sure that the last three stitches are single crochet. So if your counts are right that should happen automatically. I'll see you at the end of this row. So at the end of the row if your counts are right the last three will be one single crochet each. So as I told you this is going to be the other side. So you're gonna turn your work and you're gonna come back using that same yarn. So you're just gonna match stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So when you chain one you're single crocheting and then you're just single crocheting in each single uh, stitch and if there's a chain just chain two to match it and then jump over and do the next one. So going forward in order to save time on this video I'm just gonna say match chain to chain, stitch to stitch whenever you're doing the return pass with the color for when you're using it for the second row in a row or second row each time you're doing it. So do this all the way to the other side and I'll meet you back at the end of row number two. So coming back all the way to the last stitch I don't wanna finish that with that color. I want to let this fall and grab up the other color and just pull it up and put it into the stitch. So it's resting somewhat taut on this side and then you're going to then begin rows number three and four and this is what it looks like. Let's begin three and four next. Now rows number three and four when you're looking at it you're gonna chain up one and you're gonna single crochet only in the first two. You're going to chain two and skip this last single crochet in that group of three. This double crochet is going to come into there Okay, we're gonna stay on the front side. So this is going to tell us then these odd numbers which is number three, one, three, five, etc. is going to be the front side of the project. So all this fun stuff you're going to see happening as you're crocheting it. Then you're going to chain two after that's done and skip and go to the middle one of the grouping of three single crochet then chain two and then coming on down. So you'll notice that in between it's all the same. It's just the edges you have to worry about making sure you start off properly and it's balanced on both sides. Let's begin row number three. In row number three chain up one. So you're using this new color and you're going to single crochet only the first two in a row. You're then going to chain two to create a space. So the space that we're doing you're gonna use this stitch later on in the future but not right now in these next two passes. So now that you've chained two you're gonna come into this stitch down here. So you're just gonna do that as a double crochet. So coming down just stay on the front side of the work and go and isolate that stitch and stay on the front. And you're just double crocheting and this is providing an overlay that will sit in front which is creating that shaping that you want. After that's done you're just gonna chain up two and you're going to see the next grouping of three. Just come to the middle one of the three. Single crochet, chain two and then come down here. So you're skipping this next single and you're going to put a double crochet down in the front here. Just like that. So chain two. There's the next grouping of three. Just come to the middle one. Chain two and then jumping down. And you're gonna do this all the way across. This is row number three. When you finally get to the other side you're just going to match this last one that you're gonna come down with. You're going to chain two, 
skip the next one only and you're going to single crochet in the last two stitches of this. And that was your first pass then of row number three. So we know that the color is being carried up on the other side so we know we have to flip this over. So row number four you're going to match chain to chain, stitch to stitch. So even if it's a double crochet here that's still a stitch. So just chain up one and you're going to single crochet in each of the stitches and if there's a chain space just pull it up with your hands you can see it. So you'll just chain two to match that. This is a double crochet so you're gonna single crochet there. You can see the next one is a chain so chain two. So jumping and etc. So just match chain to chain, stitch to stitch as you return on number four and we'll be changing over the yarn to go back with that plum color in just a few moments. So as you finish up row number four the last two are single crochet so you imagine stitch to stitch, chain for chain. This last one let this fall, grab up this plum color again and pull it through and we'll officially start row number five and six in just a moment. So row number five and six I'm just going to tell you now going forward match chain to chain, stitch to stitch when we do the return pass. So we're going to start up we're gonna chain one and single crochet in the first one chain two to skip over this one here and then you're going to double crochet down into this space here. You're going to single crochet in the next single crochet that's available to you and then you're going to double crochet down here. Then chain two, skip over this right here, this single crochet and coming down and you'll see that materializing. So then when you come back it's chain to chain, stitch to stitch all the way across. Let's begin row number five and six. So row number five and six chain up one, you're gonna single crochet in the first one and then begin the fun stuff. So you're gonna chain two which skips over this next one and you're gonna come right down into this stitch right here. So you just double crochet and coming right down in just like that and then you are going to single crochet in the next single crochet and then jump down into the next one right here. You see that? Pretty cool right? So now as you continue your story you're going to chain two and jump over this single crochet and then start again. So you're just going to come down and you can see this in the diagram too. So you'll come down, you'll single crochet in the next one and then jump down. So think about everything in sets of pairs. So there's a pair, there's a pair. So in order to separate the pairs you're going to chain two, skip over the next single and then jump on down. Single crochet in the next one and then jump on down. So think about it everything is in sets. Okay so you're gonna have to jump. So one, two. So you're gonna jump over the single crochet and then come on down. You're going to single crochet in the next one and then jump on down and you'll do this all the way across until you get to the other side. So at the end here of this row you're going to chain two. You're gonna skip over the next one and just go right into the last one for a single crochet. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. So think about everything in pairs. Now you're gonna turn your work and do row number six and it's chain to chain, stitch to stitch. So just chain up one. If there's a chain just jump on over it. So one, two, I'm jumping over this chain and then single crochet. So there's technically three in a row. So there's a double, a single and a double. If you turn it over you can see it. So you just apply one single crochet in each of those and then chains as you jump over chains. So be uh, begin this, this is row number six and when I get over to the next row what I'm going to do is the last stitch I'm going to pull through the new color and then get ready for row number seven and eight with you in just a few moments. So I'm at the end of row number six and we're now going to begin seven and eight and seven and eight is going to conclude this particular one and therefore you will be able to see the key after this one. So let's go back to the diagram for seven and eight. So seven and eight is kind of unique. So we're going to be finishing off the spacing as we're gonna have a solid piece of work coming in here in the future. So row number seven we're going to chain up one and do one single in the first one and then we're going to jump down. The next three stitches will be single crochet and then jump down. 
three and jump down. So we're not creating any spaces in this row. So when we uh, come across on row number eight, it's just one single crochet in each. Let's do row number seven and eight now. So row number seven is just chain up one and you're going to single crochet in the first one and then jump on down. So come on down to the next one way down here. That's a double crochet and the next three in a row will each be one single crochet in each stitch. So one, two and three and then you're just gonna jump on down. So just come on down and the next three in a row are single crochet. Please do this all the way across. When you get to the other side I want you to turn your work, chain one and do one single crochet in each stitch all the way back and that will finish you off for row number eight. I don't think I need to show you that because that's pretty self explanatory. I'll see you back here in just a moment at the end of round of our row number eight and we'll start row number nine and ten together. Okay row number eight is done. So seven and eight has been completed. Rows number nine and ten I don't need to take you to the diagram for that. It's just one single crochet in each of the stitches. So using this plum color just go across one single in each and then one single coming back. Make sure that you actually chain one as you begin each one. Let's begin row number nine and ten. Just one single crochet. So just chain up one. One single crochet in each stitch and then turn and then chain one and one single in each and then I'll see at the end of row number ten in just a few moments. Okay rows number nine and ten are done and I've switched my color over to the sand and I'm ready now for eleven and twelve. Now row number eleven and twelve it's the very same as one and two. The only difference and the reason why they did that is that if you notice is that we do row number eleven and twelve now it's the different color than what we had. So when we originally started with this we were actually working with a different color than what we're about to do now. So we're going to do number eleven and twelve. So you're just gonna chain up one, one single in each of the first three, chain two, jump over one and then the next three in a row chain two, jump over one and etc. and then coming back on number twelve it's matched stitch to stitch, chain for chain. Let's do number eleven and twelve. Let's do number eleven and twelve. So just chain up one and do one single crochet in the first three and then you're going to chain two, skip only one stitch and then single crochet the next three. One, two and three and then chain two, skip only one stitch and single crochet in the next three. Do this all the way to the other side. The last three if your count is right should be single crochet and then turn your work chain one and uh, single crochet in each stitch and skip over the chains with chains. So it match chain to chain, stitch to stitch and I'll see you at the end of row number twelve. So row eleven and twelve are now done and you have your spaces to ready to play next time and we're gonna begin rows number thirteen and fourteen using the new color and that will fill in the spaces as you will see. Let's look at the diagram once again. Row number thirteen and fourteen. So you're gonna single uh, chain one single crochet only in the first two. This is like before. You're going to then chain two and then come on down. Chain two. You're going to single crochet in the middle one of the grouping of three. Chain two skipping over there and just come on down here and etc. Then when you come back on fourteen it's chain to chain stitch to stitch and I'll see you at the end of row number fourteen but let's show you how to do thirteen first. So row number 13 just chain up one and single crochet in the first two. Then chain two. We've done this before and then you're skipping this one and just coming on to over here. So come on down. So this is changing the color of the key sequence. So after that one's down chain one, uh, two and you're gonna skip over the next one. So just look at the group of three. Just go for the middle one and then chain two. So you're skipping over the next single and just come on down. Then you're going to chain two and come to the middle one of the grouping of three and you'll do that all the way across. At the very last one you're going to skip over the next one and you'll just single crochet in the final two. And that will conclude off row number thirteen. So turn your work and match stitch to stitch chain for chain and I'll see you at the end of row number fourteen in just a moment. Okay, I'm at the end of number fourteen and number fourteen uh, is just looking like this. We have all of our spaces. Let's go to fifteen and sixteen on the diagram next. So fifteen and sixteen you're going to chain up one single in the first one and then chain two and then jump on down. Single crochet in the next single crochet and then jump on down 
and then chain two. Remember what I showed you before about things being in pairs? So this is going to be, think about it like pair, a pair, a pair, and a pair, and etc. And you'll do that all the way across. Let's do that and then on the way back 16 is chain to chain, stitch to stitch. Let's do 15 and 16 next. Okay, 15 is just chain up one and single crochet in the first one and then chain two and to jump. You're going to jump down into the space so just skipping that single and just jump on down and you're going to single crochet in the next single and then jumping on down. So think about this as a pair. So here's a pair, they're, mat they're working together. Chain two to skip over the next single crochet here and then come on down. Single crochet in the next single and then come on down here, single crochet or sorry double crochet in there. So think about it in the spaces. So there's a pair, there's a pair and you'll keep doing that all the way across. So there's two chains that separate these pairs as you go. And then once you get to the other side like I am, you're just gonna finish off the side. So you're just doing your final pair in, chain two and you're going to skip over the next one and you're just gonna single crochet in the last. And that's what it looks like. Then you're gonna turn your work and do row number 16. It's stitch to stitch, chain for chain. I'll see you at the end of number 16 in just a moment. Okay, row number 16 is now complete. I have my spacing and etc. We're gonna do 17 and 18. 17 is gonna conclude off this key and then we're gonna continue our sequence. So let's do onto the, onto the diagram 17 and 18 next. So looking back at the diagram, chain one, single crochet in the first and you're gonna jump on down and then the next three are single crochet and then jump on down and etc. So we're not creating any spaces going across and 18 is just a straight shot across of doing single crochet. So let's do 17 and 18 next. Okay 17 just chain up one, one single crochet in the first one so we're not creating any spaces. So you see that there's a space there so you're just gonna jump on down. That's what the diagram says to do anyway. So you're jumping on down with a double and then if you can remember the next three in a row are just single crochet. But if you're looking at spaces you should be able to see that too. And now you're gonna jump on down and this is really highlighting this key shaping. You'll be able to see it right. And then single crochet in X3 and etc. So please do this all the way across for row number 17. At the end of row number 17 you're still jumping down and then you have one single crochet at the very end. Row number 18 turn your work and it's just straight shot across chain up one and one single crochet in each and I'll see at the end of number 18 and we'll change our color back to the other color for 19 and 20. So number 19 and 20 I don't need to take you to the diagram it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. So chain up one, one single in each and then chain one and one single crochet of each. So 19 and 20 is the final of the repeating and once I get there I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. So chain up one and one single in each going all the way across and back and I'll see you at the end of this row. So we just now completed rows number one through 20. That is the entire sequence. So when you start rows number one and two again, you will be immediately starting the new key. So you'll see that when you finish row number 20, you see the symmetry balance. It's gonna be awesome. So you're just going to repeat rows number one through 20 until the project is magically about 58 inches or pretty close to it. At this point then, if I wanna show you how to do the border, we're gonna do that. So just keep repeating at this time rows number one through 20 and then come back here and I'll show you how to do the border and in this case it'll just be a few seconds from now. So let's prepare to do the border next. To do the border I want to get rid of the secondary color. In this case it's this plum and in order to get rid of this kind of yarn because it's so thick is that you'll need a bigger tapestry needle and let's bring you a little closer. So what I want to do is just take this and just drag it inside the stitching itself and pull across. And when I pull it I don't wanna change the shape of it. And a slightly different path going in the opposite direction. So this is the second pass 
and then finally the third pass. So you wanna go back and forth and every time you're changing out your yarn you'll wanna do the same concept of going back and forth inside. To do the border I just fastened off this yarn and I wanna start with the right side. So it's the side that's facing up. That's what we wanna do today. So what I'm going to do at this moment is that I'm going to start off in an edge. So because we've been doing single crochet each row equals a single crochet. So coming into the very first one and if it's already on the hook just loop the yarn through and pull through and you will have two loops. Pull through both of this, both of those and that's a standing single crochet. So starting in the next row whenever there's row being or yarn being carried over just go right up and catch it. So let's see how this is a carryover. So when you're going into this plum color just make sure that the, that carryover stays inside the stitch. So you have to sink below it. I'm also capturing that beginning strand. So when you're going over sand color there is the plum. So when I'm going into the sand color I wanna make sure I catch that plum one, one and that one's being carried up as well. So you wanna go back and forth on this side of doing this. So this is going across and then back down the other side when we get there in just a moment. So I'll see you at the end of this row and I'll be right back in just a moment. When I get to the other side I'm just doing the last two rows here on the side and then I'm gonna turn my work. Then finally the second row is just gonna chain up one. I'm gonna put the straggler so that it gets stuck underneath as well. The less sewing the better in, in my point of view. So I just wanna single crochet myself right all the way back and then that's the end of the story for this side of the border. Then you wanna repeat the other side. So I showed you the side that has all the carrying yarn. So the other side is just pretty straightforward. Just going into the side of each of the stitch or each of the rows as you go. So please do this all the way across and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way to where I had started and then this is the end of the line. So I'm going to trim this and I showed you how to weave in the ends already with the tapestry needle. So you wanna do that. So just go back and forth three times. Do that with any of these tails. If, uh, if they're not secure enough for you and make sure that they're good. You're going to turn the project now to the right side of the project so the good side's facing up you should see the keys and then you'll start on the very base here just like I did with the standing single crochet. Just go all the way across. There's nothing being carried on this side so you don't have to worry about that so much and you're gonna go back and forth with then just of the single crochet and then weave in your ends and then you're good to go. So this would be how you would do the Greek key mosaic crochet blanket. It's actually pretty fun. Um, I enjoy this kind of thing. It's, it's a bit of a challenge and it certainly it beats just doing regular single crochet or, or double crochet on a consistent basis and it's something to have in your collection that's a fun little project to be able to work with. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you.